So what's going on guys, my name's Chopper, and Black Ops Cold War Zombies has officially just been entirely revealed, and many of you guys have seen the trailer, but if you haven't, I suggest going to watch it, but after watching today's reveal, I am genuinely more hopeful and optimistic for a Zombies game than I have been in a really, really long time, and I'm going to explain why that is. Now, to be honest, I don't consider myself a particularly optimistic person to begin with, but I am extremely optimistic about the future of Zombies, and particularly in this iteration for a lot of reasons, but before we get started in today's video if you guys could leave a like rating if you enjoy subscribe if you are new to the channel that would be awesome and i stream zombies almost every single day on twitch make sure to go drop a follow and come say hi i genuinely think that the way they portrayed this game in the trailers and are explaining it in the videos that they made i i, I think this is the best move they could have made entirely now many of you guys know that i'm not really much of a storyline guy when it comes to zombies i generally play it for the gameplay but i think what they did by not bringing back ether as the main part of the story was the best move they could have made and that's not to say some of the things we liked about Ether aren't going to be involved in. What they've done is actually genius. Storyline for Black Ops Cold War is going to be set in the dark Ether. It's like basically a spin-off timeline, so to speak, of our main Ether storyline, where some of the things from that universe, the one we've been playing for the past decade, are going to bleed into this new one. However, the experiences and the characters and, and mostly everything else is going to be entirely novel with a spin on the things that we love. I was very pleasantly surprised at the very controlled uses of fan service in this. They could have easily just been like, hey, here's everything you remember from zombies. Here's the ray gun. Here's the thunder gun. Here's Richtofen. But they didn't do that, right? They brought back a few things that we love, like a, i.e. the mystery box, Nocturne Toten, Pack-A-Punch. A lot of these cool things, Juggernaug is a huge one. A lot of these things that we all know as iconic zombies experiences, but they've done it in a way that feels incredibly fresh and interesting. It's sort of like when the Giants came to BO3, and I thought that was the best move for them to do, as it was Doris, but with a new spin on it. It felt familiar, but different. And that's kind of the, the concept that I see with Black Ops Cold War Zombies. Now, as far as gameplay, this is where we have a lot to talk about. And I'm happy to report that as far as everything I've seen uh, in the trailer and just information going around, everything checks out to this being a fun and well-rounded zombies experience. Now, most fundamentally, the gameplay is classic. Craig Houston made that abundantly clear in the video that it's going to be classic round-based survival gameplay. And this was a big concern of mine, whether they were going to do this or not, because in BO4, they were considering not having rounds at all. It's going to be like a continuous wave as you solve the quest, but that kind of, I don't really think that's what zombies is fundamentally, and I think that having no, you know, survival based rounds would have been a mistake. So it's good to know now that at least that very important base is covered. And don't worry, for Easter egg players and, you know, people that enjoy going on the quest in zombies, that is completely covered as well. I imagine that D-Machine, the map on disc, is going to have the most in-depth Easter egg quest we've ever seen in zombies. That's what it seems to me. And the beautiful thing is, they represent how the the game is going to play even from an aesthetic standpoint in the new map you have the above ground section of nocturne and toten upper layer of the map still represents the real world where soldiers fight where where it's sort of the the monotony of zombies gameplay and then you can dig deeper metaphorically and literally in the map and what you discover is an entirely different can of worms where you can dive into easter egg quests and and it becomes a little bit more ethereal so in a lot of ways so far i think they've struck the balance correctly not only in that aspect but also in how much fan service they put into the trailer, it seems to me that keeping it in the same universe, technically speaking, as Ether, but not focusing on the typical four that we always do, was the best move possible. And it doesn't undercut any of the closure that we got from the main Ether storyline as well. Togger Toten, and thus even the characters sending them themselves off, would have felt flat and, and completely undercut if they had just brought them back in this. But the some of the best aspects of Ether are going to bleed into this universe, which is such a neat idea. Another thing I'm unbelievably excited for to try out in zombies is the movement system because in the black ops cold war alpha i absolutely love the movement system that's included in that and the reason being assuming they don't change it or anything but the reason being is that it has so many different options to actually utilize to your to your advantage it's 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 way more in depth than even bo3's movement bo3's movement is great but sometimes it feels a little bit rigid and i would say that's my only complaint black ops 4's movement is not nearly as in depth as black ops 3 and that's why i don't like it quite as much but cold war might have the most intricate movement system ever and assuming they don't make any changes it's going to remain that way in zombies and i'm a really big fan of that new feature treyarch mentioned is that there is a new way to end your zombies game instead of just dying so typically in any zombies map you would either just die out of the game at some point end the game on your own manually or you'd complete the easter egg and the game would end on its own however what they've done with the new ending mechanic is literally genius so because the game is round based again and it's very survival oriented you can survive 
as long as possible, and, and that is a huge plus in my book. But instead of just ending the game, let's say if you play a match with your friend and you guys get bored, and you just don't want to, you know, pause and then literally just click end game for no reason, you can do what's called an exfil, and you survive like one little last, you know, intense wave of zombies, and you're going to get rewarded if you survive that. It'll end the game, you'll get rewarded in the process, and it's more satisfying than just ending the game from the menu. They figured out a way to make at least leaving zombies a bit more satisfying than either just ending your game or dying out, which again is still an option. The exfil is not mandatory. It is completely optional if you want to do that. Now, they also mentioned something in the reveal that I'm a little bit questionable about, and I, I think that's a good thing that I should be a bit nervous about this, so we'll see what happens, but basically all of the cross progression from multiplayer and campaign also translates to zombies, meaning you can spawn in with like an SMG or an AR if you want to, according to their words, and the only reason I'm a bit concerned about that is I don't know if that's going to influence progression at all, and I don't know how that will feel. The point of starting with a pistol in zombies is to give you the feeling that you're vulnerable and there's not much you can do against the zombies. You, you always feel like you're at least somewhat at a disadvantage until you get better guns, and that's kind of the point of, you know, progressing in the game. However, spawning in with an AR may ruin that to some degree, although we don't know what early rounds or game progression as a whole is going to feel like, so it's too early to tell for sure. Again, it's not about the literal act of spawning in with a pistol that's satisfying in zombies. It's, it's the idea of that you're getting more powerful as you move along and progress, and so if you're spawning in with an AR or an SMG, as long as the, the progression in the match still feels meaningful enough, then I don't think that's a problem at all. But again, we'll have to write a very fine line and we'll see how that plays out. Then the gameplay, they mentioned we're going to have a lethal support and tactical slot. And lethal and tactical are pretty straightforward. We know what that's most likely going to mean. Support is a little bit interesting. We don't know if this is referring to specialist weapons or killstreaks or what, what exactly that's going to play for. But specialist, the way they're integrated into Black Ops 4 was a mistake. I think that the BO3 implementation was fine, and, and I would actually like to see that return where you have to, you know, progress a little bit and, and create a quest for them. That's cool. Giving players specialist weapons directly off the spawn, I believe, was a mistake because it, it didn't feel like anything that you got in-game as far as, you know, wonder weapons or any gun at all was better than the specialist weapon that you literally had spawning in with, and I think that sort of ruined the tension of gameplay for me. It also didn't punish mistakes very hard, which deflated gameplay as well. I'm sure Cold War Zombies recognize that and has learned from it, but they're going to implement specialist weapons in a way where it adds to the depth of the game rather than deflating the gameplay. Having enough unique boss zombies and just the stylistic drawing of the game, I, I think I'm a really, really big fan of right now. There's not anything that's an immediate red flag indicator to me that this game might be not so good. Another great thing is all of the content for this upcoming year for Cold War Zombies is going to be free. So this means literally anybody who owns the game can download whatever brand new map comes out. Everybody's going to be along for the DLC season. A problem with zombies was that throughout the years, as the DLCs kept going on and on, fewer and fewer people would purchase them, meaning that you'd have a you know very small player base for the final DLC, generally speaking. But all of the content is going to be free, meaning every single COD player can at least participate in the right of zombies. And if they keep the gameplay, at least the barrier to entry, pretty casual, then that means everybody can participate. The zombies community is primed to grow a lot this year, and if they're able to execute it as intended, I think this could genuinely be one of the best years of zombies we've ever had. I'm very harsh on zombies when I need to to be. I, I, I really take apart Black Ops 4 wherever I can, but and I'll, I'll do the same for Cold War, but right now, how everything's looking, I'm pretty optimistic going into this, and I would just like I would just want to let you guys know my thoughts on this, so what? let me know what you guys think down below about Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Zombies. What are you excited for, or do you have any concerns? I would love to know about that down below in the comment section, but anyways, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Make sure to drop a like on the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're brand new, and also make sure to go follow me on Twitch, where I stream almost every single day. Links in the description. I'd love to see you over there, but anyways, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy and peace out.